For what is life without the promise of death? Greetings and salutations, friends and mostly enemies. <laughs> Today, we're going indie or underground, whichever terminology you prefer. We're doing a book review on someone who's not necessarily super famous, but they do have a couple of novels on the free market right now. And we're going to be reviewing the latest one that's due for release November 1st, Oath by Poppy Karaki. And I'm sorry, miss, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Four names sometimes get the better of me. If you're excited about the idea of me doing book review videos and you want to see more, like, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, all the YouTube things. And if you want to know which ones are coming up, they are going to be The Savior's Sister by Jenna Moresi. Jenna is a personality here on YouTube. She has a great channel full of writing advice and rants about what she likes to see and doesn't like to see in fiction. Um, I agree with a lot of what she has to say in terms of the literary world, and so I figured I would give her writing a chance. I pre-ordered this sucker, and um, I'm going to start reading it literally as soon as I'm done making and editing this video. So you can expect that pronto. Uh, I'm actually going to be uploading multiple videos this week. This review and... Battlegrounds by Jim Butcher. If you uh, watched any of my videos, you've probably heard me reference the Dresden series. I absolutely love this series, and this is a direct sequel to Peace Talks, which he doesn't always do in this series. A lot of them have pretty significant time skips between them. This is a direct sequel, and so I'm super stoked to read it. <laughs> Oath by Poppy Karaki. This book is set in a fantasy setting. It's not high fantasy. There's no fantasy races introduced in this uh, story. There's no magic system introduced. It's just a fictional world with, uh, you know, a fictional culture and fictional places and uh, fictional religions and things of that nature. So, you know, kind of basic, low fantasy, whatever word you wanted to describe it. It's a fictional setting, but there are no fantastical elements. So our story follows a girl by the name of Colette, and she's homeless when we're introduced to her, and we follow her through a series of events. This is meant to be a character-driven story. It's clearly not um, about the events that are happening in the world. This novel is clearly meant to be a very character-driven narrative. So we're obviously supposed to care about Colette a lot, and for the most part, Poppy, the author, accomplishes that goal. She's a sympathetic protagonist, despite the fact that she gets pulled down into the mud by the events that unfold. Um, we retain a definite sense of empathy with her, and as a reader, you definitely still root for her. Beyond the story being just about Colette, we also have this um, interesting world that we can explore. Um, I don't think this is set on Earth or an Earth-like planet. Um, because there are some places described that um, either couldn't or would be highly unlikely to exist on an Earth-like planet. So it's a world that you would kind of like to potentially explore a little more, especially if there was some kind of interesting narrative taking place that took you through different scenery. Um, I would definitely like to see more of certain aspects of the world explored, and I think that was something that didn't happen that I would have liked to have happened and if there was a follow-up book where more of that was promised I would most likely read it. Besides that the book is somewhat well written. There we, there we go. It's somewhat well written. Um, the use of language is adequate but not necessarily artful. Evokes emotion but doesn't necessarily impact you as much as it could. Another problem I personally had with the book was I felt like there was maybe one or two too many plot threads and there wasn't enough fleshing out of certain plot threads or enough foreshadowing to really make them hit. The storyline had so much potential. As someone who also writes and has a novel under his belt and is currently trying to publish it and all that good stuff, 
I see what was probably in her mind, and I know how great it could have been if it had been executed a little more thoroughly, or if it had been more fleshed out or more foreshadowed. It's really hard to explain what I'm what I have in my head, but I think it comes through. The plot threads just didn't have enough meat on them for them to hit as hard as they could have. If the story had been executed a little more artfully, had a little bit more fleshing out, it really could have been a gut-wrenching, soul-rending uh, piece that just stuck with you. And unfortunately, it just didn't land that hard for me because there were certain elements that didn't hit as hard as they should have and i and that really like bugged me because i really wanted i wanted them to land i saw where she was going with it and there were a few plot points that i was able to call them like that but even though i predicted them perfectly i still was waiting to read them and i still wanted them to play out and either play out in such a way that they were still fun and you know gripping to read or at least play out in a satisfactory manner and some of them were just like well yeah I saw that coming a mile away and you know what I mean they didn't hit as hard as they should have I don't I for me I can't say 100% whether they didn't hit as hard as they should have because it was so predictable or if it was because there wasn't enough foreshadowing or there wasn't any kind of twist element. But that's not necessarily, you know, super bad or super unforgivable. Um, some people like being able to tell where a story goes. Uh, I personally like a little bit of surprise. And so take that as you will. Overall, I'm going to say I give the book, you know, like a, f a five and a half, six out of ten. Um, you know, two and a half, three out of five stars, whatever you want to say. It wasn't a bad book. And if someone gifted it to me, uh, I, I read it, I would put it on my shelf and be happy I had it and all that good stuff. But it's also not something that I would go out of my way to, you know, push into someone's hands and make them read it so that we could talk about it kind of thing, you know. Uh, it's just a, It's just a good book to kill some time. Yeah, it's it's not going to change the world or win many, many accolades. It's just a fun little read that if you got nothing else to do on a Sunday afternoon, you can flip some pages, kill some time. But, to be fair, that instantly puts it ahead of, like, a third of the books in existence? <laughs> There's a lot of trash out there. So, that's my review of Oath by Poppy Karaki. Um, all of her stuff is going to be linked down in the description. You know, did down there <laughs> in the abyss. Uh, like I said, like, share, subscribe, comment, do all the YouTube things. Stay tuned for those follow-up videos that I have coming. Um, besides those, I also have Ready Player Two and the Cyborg Tinker pre-ordered, and those are going to be hopefully arriving in the mail uh, any day now. I haven't actually checked when those are due to be arriving in the mail for a while. I should probably pay more attention to things like that. Alright guys, catch you next time. Stay safe out there and be well. I have watched a lot of her. Oh, best friend used phone call.